Today's video is a follow-up to our previous video where we took a look at an above average player, but today we're looking at a well above average player. And in this video, it demonstrates a lot of the examples that I talked about in that video about how to play the game and common mistakes that you're probably making if you are barely above average average or below average and there was a lot of feedback on that video they said hey you know what let's take a look and this ended up lining up with it perfectly because spiros and fluxery land pretty much at the same location uh there's a little bit of a different zone but it demonstrates a lot of things i talked about with positive examples uh, because in that video, we were pretty critical about a lot of the decision making, how they move, the pace, the rotations, the accuracy. There was a lot of things we talked about. But the goal is to do something that is repeatable. And in this gameplay, I think the vast majority of players can work on and improve to get to a point where you're very comfortable and win more often, improve your KD, uh, get into a little bit harder lobbies because of that, and then have to continue, you know, overcome that skill gap. So that's kind of what we're looking at today. You can kind of see what's going on. They have one teammate over here on the helicopter over on the mini map. We're kind of rocking through that. Um, there is a buy here. He hears a guy comes through, does a little bit of aggressive slide cancel. They are split. They're looking for the next guy. He's like, I think he's on the second floor. I could probably hear some audio since his teammate didn't see him on the roof. They're going to do a pinch thing. Puts the snapshot, sees the guy in the stairwell, is going to be able to take this guy out pretty easy. Teammates coming from the other side, super easy kill. And that's sometimes what you want to do is work with your team. We saw a lot closer hand holding with the teams that we were watching previously. And one, one downside with that is you lose a little bit of intel. Uh, at least if you're split a little bit, they don't know exactly where both of you are. You can disperse a little bit easier. Like let's say one guy dies, he can get away. Uh, but you're still close enough to kind of get a trade if they don't thirst you immediately, which can be pretty common with throwing knives. So they're pushing directly. They were in and out of the area in about a minute, uh, maybe two at the tops, after looting, getting to engagement, and rocking and rolling. They are using a similar loadout with an STG, but he's using an MP40 instead of the, the well gun that we saw with it. So they're going to actually try and do some recons, use a helicopter for mobility, and kind of rotate through. You can kind of see what's going on a lot of times what you want to do is use vehicles for the mobility to get in a better position and a lot of times we can see that there's guys down low there's two down low those could be pretty easy it looks like he's kind of reading chat missed them maybe but rotating over to focus on getting recons because you can use vehicles and do two to three recons you can set yourself up in later zones and then basically some of those wins are free Maybe you get a terrible zone, but usually if you know where the zone's going to end, you can take the power position and the rotation from there. And we're going to have some talking points as we get to each of those zones. As it closes, this is kind of where you want to get to, and they execute it fairly well based off the zone. And that's one of the unique things is every zone will be different. You can see he kind of continually pulls up the overhead tack mech, which we talked about. And we're going to come through over here. Initially, you would uh, grab it right away, but what they're going to do is they're going to wait until the zone closes to actually finish this. Unfortunately, they get caught up with uh, another team, so they weren't able to do it to get that cash. But the reason why you stop doing that right at the end is so that you can come back later and tap it in two and a half minutes. So you're going to have about a minute discrepancy where you're going to be able to get into it. So if you look at the clock here, you can see that we have a three minute and a two minute timer there. And those will make it so that it allows where you're going to have, hey, you know what? We got to get back over there. Deal, get in, get out of gunfight. So you can see they're split a little bit. His teammate's at an off angle. And what, what you usually want to do is use the vehicles to your advantage. What ends up happening is every time people use a vehicle, what will end up happening is you'll go like this and you'll be like, all right, cool. Let me look at that vehicle. And then what's going to happen is your teammate's just going to go, heck yeah, let, let's go around. Let's go ahead and flank through and let's go ahead and do it this way. And we're going to go ahead and go for the flank. So essentially that's what's happening in this case. You have Spiros coming in on the helicopter. He dropped off Flux a little bit early. We can go ahead and see that over here on the map where he's dropped off there. And he's over here and you can see that based off these images, they're sight lines. So this is Fluxury sight line and you got Sparrows over here and they have a pretty good area that they're covering and they kind of have an idea of where the person is somewhere in this general vicinity, whether it's one team, two, they really don't have a UAV, 
Flux could potentially get some money together and maybe get that, but that's kind of where we're at in the moment, and we'll kind of see how that plays out. So you can see he's coming up the side. He's trying to bait a shot. He does see someone. Now Flux can come up at an angle. Didn't really need it. His beams were there. He's like, oh, he called out another guy there, which is the duo. And with duos, they're always in pairs, right? Like, unless you get an insta down or uh, whatever the case is, you got to go ahead and work together and know that there's a third. At least in quads and, and trios, it gets way more complicated. But within duos, if you kill the one and you don't get a team wipe, their, their, their duo is probably pretty close. So you play it, that situation away that way. So there it is. He's like, yep, I need a second loadout. Experimenting with an optic. Um, so they have some issues with the heli. He ends up parking it on this roof that he can't get back on, unfortunately. And then they lose out on the time. But we're still going to see this played out here. Uh, the other part of the vehicle is you get the third person camera. So you can actually look all the way which way you want. He gets down. And now he's getting to cover. He's going to come through. Jumps in. The accuracy is probably the one and most important part. That guy's using the Eatra Burst, and it looked kind of clean there. Uh, especially after the buffs, it's probably even better. So he comes through, cleans these up before getting the res, because he still has like 30 seconds on the res. You know, the res timer's pretty long. They get third party, kind of sucks. But overall, he plays it the right way, where he gets in, gets out, takes them both out so they can't self-revive, gets a team wipe, gets his team up, and then he's, uh, he's set up. Obviously, with the floor loop perks now, you can kind of see that he already has uh, the the perk tempered, and then he struggles to get up top here for a little bit, and then decides to jump down um, as he jumps through over here. Nothing happened between. I just skipped a little bit ahead, uh, so we can go ahead and keep the pace going. Unfortunately, missed it out, but he was saving that recon so he could get the next zone. Let's see what the health is. So you can see he's kind of marking those. Oh, no, it's not low health. It's still about 70%. So they're going to rotate over here. You can hear gunfire. You can see he pulls up the mini-map to get a good grasp of where they are. And, and I'll go ahead and re-show that because a lot of times that's the important part of pulling up the attack map. So what ends up happening in this particular case, you can see that if they're on the outside here, you don't know if the person is like right here or if the person's like, let's say the overhead view of the map, they're over here somewhere or over here. You know, obviously they're close enough to have gunfire. I'm exaggerating a little bit with these circles, but what you're gonna see is he pulls up the map. Okay. Yep, sees right over there, and they kind of had an idea where they're at. So, they do they have a line of sight? What are they gonna do? He drops off his teammate, aggressively goes in, positions, and now they know they gotta make it over there because one, the zone's closing, two, that's where kind of the gunfire was, right? A little bit to the side here. So he's gonna drop him off, different angle. We've seen that drop off. It's a little bit of a bait and switch. And this again is kind of one of those things where I was talking about where you have the line of sight from Spiros, which is in this direction. And then we have Flux, which is gonna be in this direction, looking that way. So we have it right here on the map. And then his is, is like right here. So they're kind of teaming on this vehicle here. And it gives you an idea of what's going on within the within the area. So if somebody was there, they could bait the shot with the helicopter. And then Flux would come back and behind and be able to get that flank. He's just messing around there. He's like, if we get killed here, he's just messing around, right? That's sometimes It's a game at the end of the day. You should still be having fun. But winning is always more fun than losing. <laughs> so there's the overhead view of the map. Uh, if we look at that a little bit closer again is we don't have a ton of info. He does zoom out We did see that vehicle over here in mines, but what we're looking at here is this edge of the zone You're gonna have a lot of people coming in from like mines this way and What will happen is people the, the half this zone is you can see it's already out of bounds Like this is out of bounds. This is not usable space So this is gonna be a lot of people in this area slowly pushing in from this unless they were the edge campers by the the water right or positioned tactically by the water so they're going to go ahead and try and do another recon if one's available and they'll push directly there and they'll continue to do this bait and switch and duos is probably the best to do this to win unless you just get torched out of the helicopter most people don't have that kind of accuracy if they do you know they're a demon avoid them right get better positioning and take them out so they don't normally take recons, 
But with this particular video, uh, they they had like $1,000 on the line. Somebody said they would donate $1,000. So they played it as smart and efficient as possible. Uh, the way that, you know, you would have good fundamentals. Otherwise, you just mess around, try to make content. So they're doing another split here. And this again, we continue to see this with duos. This is the most like strongest thing you can do. And this is to, you can see that he has this vision over on the top left. Spiros has it across here. So Spiros has this angle here that he's covering and his teammate has this. So in reality, this dude is so screwed. He literally has nowhere to go. Like, what is he supposed to do? Like he can't get to this cover, right? He can't get over here. He's wide open in the street. He can't get to this tree. He can't get to this. Like, he is so screwed. Like, no man's land. So he's getting shot already. He comes through with the thirst. And the dude is dead. There's somebody with an RPG. You can see the tracer come through. He doesn't really know where he's at. They are a little bit split here. This is where it does get a little bit sketch. He comes out. Here's the guy. He's... ADS is because then you don't have to worry about a sprint to fire time. Your footsteps are quieter. So as he straight out, the guy didn't look at him. It was a 50-50 though, right? The guy could have been looking at the left. Uh, and again, now they're going to be working as a team. Even though it doesn't have the icon above his name, you can see he's pushing down there. I don't see his teammate above you. He's like, where is he at? So he's giving good comms there. And that's the clear, concise comms. And a lot of times with the duo... You can't be both passive and you really can't be both aggressive, right? So what ends up happening is one could be a little bit more passive as a lookout and the one who's more aggressive can play aggressive covering the sight lines, right? You can see he's actively strafing in the gunfight. Guns that guy. That duo is gone, right? They might have a gulag or something like that because the gulag hasn't closed. But they're hurrying up to grab the recon. Two people on the recon does it faster. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the mini map. I'm, I'm guessing at some point here to see kind of where the rotation is. And this is where you kind of strategize and plan out your attack. And what we're going to see here is this part of the map will probably be where the end zone goes. And this is what I would guess. Obviously, I've watched part of this, so I kind of have an idea of what's going on. But what you want to look at is there's a buy station up here. There's a buy station down here. And those are probably the two hot areas. There's three buy stations down here. So potentially those are going to be hot. Buy stations are always hot gravitate areas because people can buy UAVs there. They can buy their teammates. And those are little different nuanced things you got to be aware of. And the other advantage of this particular part of the hill, this edge of the zone, is this is the high ground. So if you get to this area, well, once the zone collapses, you're going to get all these people. You're going to clear this area as they come in, you're going to hold this high ground. And then as these people die and the zone closes, you know that nobody's coming from this area and they have to be coming from the bottom part. I know I just drew a sun or whatever, but you kind of get the gist of it. As soon as this area holds down, you're going to be ready to rock and roll. So you got to get selves. Those are always priorities because if you do get down, you're close enough and holding an angle where you can be annoying for that person trying to take out your teammates. So they grab this, jump in the helicopter really quick, and then get going. There's still 25 teams left. They're going to push this, get a peek uh, at this area, see if anybody's here. You can see his teammate drops off. He kind of hovers over it, which is kind of a, I would say, a risky tactic because you could get RPG'd and then you would both be down or whatever. But at least in this scenario, be able to jump in and get out of it. So this is kind of a, I would say you're a little bit risky here. You can continue to fly around. It would take a little bit longer for your teammate, but you'd be able to go that. So he's like, this is a bad zone, but they're looking at how they want to play. So you can see how he marked it there. This is Flux marking it. He says, all right, let's get to the power position, which this is the power position right here, right? Um, but like, that's what you would think. You go, oh, yeah. That's power position. And then he pings, oh no, but let's go up top on the hill, right? Let's get to two. And that ridge is what we need to hold. And, and that's kind of the thought process you need to go to. Most people always think power position is building in center zone. Not really. Like, how do we stop people from getting to that spot? Hold a certain edge of the map, have sight lines, have visuals blocked, have uh, rocks. We can look at the rocks or whatever the case is. And they're like, let's go to the ridge there. 
And that's like just understanding the map and how you need to rotate and really looking at how do we need to approach this to win? Because at the end of the day, that's the goal, right? To win. So he's peeking up over here, looking for this cash drop. He flies by. You can see this Bertha's here. Bert Bertha's are super powerful. And that's the alternative to a helicopter because Bertha's, at least if somebody does have an RPG, they're going to give away their position. He is baiting some shots here. You can see his teammates jump down and he's going to take an off angle and kind of overlook Flux again. So Flux is down low. You can see kind of where he's at. And then now they're kind of looking at, all right, what do we got to do here? He's kind of being annoying really with the helicopter. That's kind of what he's got to do. So he's fighting. But he doesn't want to get rid of the helicopter, right? It has low health. So it's kind of like, do we really want to risk it? So Flux backs off. They get to this vehicle. He's getting shot at. He's going to kind of hold an angle. This is kind of a hard shot even when mounted. Shit at the guys on the, the tower. Give him a few times. I'm signed for his help as well. He ADS to readjust his optics so it could be the closer one uh, while it's safe. He's getting shot at, so that's the risk with the helicopter. Let's get to UAV, I believe. There it is. Grabbed another. Now we're going to get more intel. Gets a self-revive, holds a UAV. And now we know there's two people over there by the tower, at least two. There could be more. You can see they pulled up the TAC map again and again. And what you do is... Really, every time you're pulling it up, like we can't, like, because we're not in control of it. He's pulling it up, glancing at a specific area, goes back into regular, so he still has awareness. Pulls it back up, gets information, and continues going back and forth. So he's using both, utilizing both, because this mini-map, although it is nice, it doesn't give all the intel. So he's going to drop you on the Bertha. So boom, he flies over it, so they didn't see him. And here he does get a little bit lucky. It does get burnt out. The guy does not hear, or he, like he hears him, but I don't think he realized that he had jumped on him. Gets to take him out, gets a dead silence. That was a little bit lucky. The guy could have beamed him a little bit better. He might have still landed and torched the dude with the drop shot or something like that. Uh, and then he comes over here and they essentially split them. And then now they have a Bertha. He had to throw the heli because it did get shot. So another risky play. But the, 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 the thing that you really see with average slightly above average and below average players is when you actually watch them play we've done like over 50 spectating randoms on this channel over 50 right the, the thing that we inevitably see is people like play as if they're scared to make mistakes like failure is probably one of the best ways to ever learn if you actively like break down why you fail so if you're like playing the game timid and scared to get in engagements because you're getting dumpstered and you're not actively trying to improve you probably already clicked away from this video right you're not actively trying to improve if you're if you're what like if you're not you're probably not making it at this point of the video but should not be scared to fail because at the end of the day what will happen is you will get better you're going to have some growing pain. It's going to be frustrating. Uh, even with the gameplay breakdown that we did on the previous uh, channel, which was Repeat Viking, and he had like a 1 KD. We went over it, and he had some of his best games since Caldera dropped. Like two of his best games in back-to-back. -back. But now his lobbies have gotten a little bit hard, and he's struggling a little bit with those. But there's always an adaption process that you're going to have to go through, and that's just inevitable. But if you're scared to fail you will likely not improve because you're not going to make the mistakes. You're going to try to play perfect. You're still going to get dumpstered, uh, but you're not really going to get anything from it. And that's why there, there, there are active changes that you can make, uh, but failure is the biggest educator, especially if you can record your gameplay, review it, uh, those types of things. I could even potentially do streams of this. If you guys hold on to gameplay and you want me to look at it, we can do it live on stream. We can do that if that's something you're interested in. I just... Don't know if there's enough interest in that, that people want to do that. So they've obviously gone through here. They've kind of cleared it. They're going to use the Bertha to three peak. A little bit split because all eyes, again, go on the Bertha. That's really what happens at the end of the day. So he's peeking, three peeking, and he's at the edge of the line here. So there's the guy. You can kind of see him on there. 
And again, they live pinged him. He doesn't have he doesn't have that perk. He's not rocking the perk that's gonna allow him to do that, right? He doesn't have the perk that's gonna mark him. So you can see he has him here, and then his teammates like off to the side, and they have off angles. And in reality, that's gonna happen here on the mini map. So in reality, you make it so that the guy's not gonna have cover. He has to take a bad position. And in really in reality, what you are doing is you're forcing the guy on this tree to have to gun you. He has to gun one of you because he, both li sight lines are bad. He has to gun you off of a head glitch. Just nasty. Disgust. That's what you're forcing this player right here to do, right in here. They have to gun you or the other person. And that is very hard to do when you have to do it immediately and you have to move off your spot to get to another position. So that is very difficult to do and very unlikely. No matter how skilled this other player is, it is very difficult to do that unless both of these players are just inherently bad, are gonna miss a ton of shots. That is very hard to gun two, like at least one to get you at least cover where they get down, buy yourself some time, something along those lines. So you can hear the comms, they're split. Always at an angle. And one thing I even mentioned Spiros because I had him watch the other one after I said, hey, bro, I saw your gameplay. Can I use it? Uh, he said, sure. I don't know if it is worth watching. I said, no, bro, it's perfect. And we we, can't, we talked a little bit about the don't gameplay. And just kind of look at their arrows. Like if you, this one thing what's great about these videos is you can watch them back again and you're probably going to notice things that you didn't see the first time or the second time or the third time. And there's just a look, and and you could do the same thing with your gameplay, where they're actively, and they even have the cone on here, right? Like you could see, you could see this vantage point right here. It shows it on the mini map. So his is there. We can't see his, but we can imagine it's there. And so look at how much like of the map they're covering, right? Like it all covers this area, and this is the edge of the zone that we kind of talked about. That's the power position that they naturally gravitated towards. Because as good players or above average players that have really good map awareness, you naturally gravitate towards those parts of the map. We can see that the vehicle is kind of cruising. And then there's a guy down here that essentially they want to hold. Still got to be careful because if you get too laser focused on making noise, then people can creep up behind you. We know that that's a little bit hard of a push behind you. But overall, this vehicle is kind of where probably the people that want to or think they, that's where you want to be to win are probably going to be positioned. So you naturally do that. Sight lines are blocked. This guy clusters. So one thing here is a lot of people, every time I mention this, there's always people that call. I did not know that. So what ends up happening is when they call in the cluster. So right here, when a cluster goes off, automatically, you can see right here on the mini map, that the guy is highlighted here. So you can see him with the down arrow. You can see him, it's the same guy in the middle of the screen. And what happens is, why that is important is because it means that you weren't clustered by a random team. Cause like, let's say the dot was over here by the vehicle. You can see the guy has gotten out or maybe over here or over here. Then you'd know, oh shoot, there's another one behind us. But the fact that it's there, it tells you that that's where your focus is. And you can see they're gonna go ahead and try and laser this dude or get him in transition. Smart move by that guy. You hold it in the pocket, use it to rotate, should buy you a little bit of time. But since they're split enough, the cluster can only hit one of them. They back off, they get the vehicle, which we're seeing in Spiros' case here. And then Flux is able to just kind of hold it down and kind of wait for that guy to rotate, which that guy might rotate to that vehicle. That could be a smart move. Maybe you try to down that a little bit. They're still clearing the area here. You can see that they're getting live ping. He ends up taking that guy down. And then there's another Bertha at play. They called in a precision. So he probably downed the guy. And then now he's using the precision to thirst the guy. Live ping the dude. They got into the vehicle. Rotate back. Still three peeking. See if anyone's over here creeping up. He remembered where he killed that dude. So he's going to go back for his loot. At the edge of the zone, should be relatively safe. Sides, ah, do I want that? Nah, I think dead silence is more valuable at this point because we already got all the, the tacticals and lethals. With quads, the ammo might be more important because you might end up in a gunfight a little bit longer, get it down, get behind cover, break plates. 
Like, there's a lot of scenarios there, but in duos, usually the ammo that you have is, is plenty. So squad's being hunted. Obviously, it's not red, so they're not close to you. Still three peeking. Even though his direction of his camera was this way, the actual, like, the player model is this way, but the camera is looking all to the side. So now he's orange. Called it out immediately. They know that somebody's in that vicinity. He's in a gunfight. You can see that there at the bottom left. Another guy went for the balloon. He's shooting the live ping. He doesn't actually see the guy. Doesn't get a single hit marker, but that, you know, it's the shot you go for. Double checking, making sure you're not getting wrapped on. Uh, Spiros is not a novice to Battle Royales. I mean, he's been playing PUBG. He played Blackout. Played all kinds of other Battle Royales. So his knowledge, especially in these late game situations, when you're playing for $1,000 potentially, you're going to play these to the T, right? So that's just kind of how it works. So he's marked this dude. He downed him. That's not a, a, a bleed like a team wipe. So he's looking for the other guy to challenge. Again... Looking over, using the rocks to cover, trying to spot a guy, and, and just seeing where people are. Because with the health change in Caldera a while ago, that makes it so that you can get shot by sides pretty much anything but a sniper. And you still have a chance to get away. So there it was. He was able to team shoot that guy. They knew that there was somebody there. And that's the team wipe. They're down to three other teams. One is a solo, as we can see at the top. You can see right there. Three teams of two, and one is a, a solo there. So, sitting on 10 kills. Again, this isn't like a hyper-aggressive gameplay. Very obviously, they've, they've showed instances where their gun skill was pretty good. But, in general, the rotations are usually what wins. He used the vehicle, positions his teammate. He's third, like, three peaking right now. And then they spotted someone, right? So you can see that while Flux is looking over here, Spiros is using the camera to look at pretty much all this area right here. So in reality, they got like 90% of the map covered and they're just peeking. He comes back to peek across. He can look over the rock without being in a vulnerable spot. So you can actually see the guy right here. I don't think the, the guy probably has his heartbeat out. A lot of those heartbeat dudes... They'd just be standing out in the open instead of behind this tree where he wouldn't be visible. But you can see he's like, oh, over there. So Flux is probably like looking right here. Spiros just happens to glance over. And you can see the guy right there looking like uh, looking like Bigfoot out in the open. So he did see him. There's no glint. So they're trying to shoot him. It's like, where the heck... So they're pinging. You can hear the call outs. Well, maybe I'm talking too much over the call outs. But basically, they're giving good call outs. Saying they're right there at this spot, on this ping, on this path. They're just being very descriptive. Succinct, to the point. So he's, now he's going to use the vehicle. It's in a 2v2v2 situation. So these are always the most sketch and most sus situations. Uh, because... You usually want to know where the, the, the last team is, right? So he pushes up, looking for him. He third person, you see he pinged him. So now that guy's distracted. He's getting beamed. He spots the other team. So now that team is wiped. These guys are out of the zone. Pay attention to that part. They don't have to play this aggressively. They could just wait. The zone is at these people's back. You can see it's kind of coming across and it's pushing in. So now we know that that's kind of what's going on. Pushing in, got an RPG. Now Spiros has to commit to jumping out. They don't know where the third one is. They were expecting that they're going to be close. But you can kind of see right here, like he's got to deal with this. But you can see that Flux is kind of dialed in and, and looking in that area to hopefully be able to still get the kills. So he's a little bit distracted. He uses the tree as cover. He jumps out. They team shoot. And that's a dub. Check out Spiro's Flux. Link in the description. Appreciate all the support on the content. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.